Well, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see you. I'm back in the Westall Hall recording worship for all of you. And I'm smiling to myself because I've set it all up and I've got the Advent candle lit. And I've realised because I'm not very tall and however I put the computer screen, you still can't see it. So hang on in there. Here is our Advent wreath. And we've got the first candle lit because Sunday was the first Sunday in Advent. And we've got the four coloured candles going round the middle candle, the white one, which is for Christmas Day. Now, there's lots of holly and ivy and berries on our Advent wreath. And we sing a song about that. Holly and the ivy are dancing in a ring round the very bright red candles and the light Christ the King. So there we are. Our candles aren't red, though. Our candles are purple and pink. We're going to talk about that over the next few weeks. Two weeks, two weeks and two days, isn't it? We've got left at school. But there we are, it's lit. We're getting ready. Advent is a time of getting ready. Getting ready for what? Well, we all know, getting ready for Christmas. And people think, oh, there's all there is about getting ready for Christmas is going out shopping, buying, doing internet shopping this, these days and making food and buying lots of food. And it's all those busy, busy things. Whereas getting ready for Christmas, it's very important we get ready in our hearts, in our souls and in our dreams and our hopes. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm just going to try and share the screen with you because one of the things that I'm really missing in school is the singing. And I'm missing hearing the Christmas carols and I'm missing just hearing all of you sing. Mr. Mackenzie recorded the songs that reception um, have in their nativity play. They're not singing them either this year. And he recorded them yesterday and I could hear the music and it reminded me so much of every year, our school tradition. And I know that lots of you in the juniors, when you come and see brothers and sisters in the reception nativity play, you can still remember the words, can't you? Skipping along to Bethlehem and the one, two, three little shepherds hurrying along. And there's so many of those songs that are very special and mean a lot. And then we've got all the Christmas ones we usually do. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, once in Royal David City. Today, I'm going to share just a little bit. You can listen to the whole thing in class later, but just a few um, verses of a carol that I really like. So let's hope I can be clever, share the screen. Remember to tick, share computer sound. And then let's go to this one. I don't think I can make it play. I want you to look at the beautiful. Thank you. 
that was a beautiful stained glass window just to pause that on. That is a wonderful carol. There are many, many wonderful carols, but that one is a hopeful one. It's looking forward. I hope you noticed how many angels there were in those stained glass windows. We talked about the importance of angels being messengers of hope, didn't we, on Monday. And in all those stained glass windows are very beautiful depictions of Mary, the angel, Mary and Joseph with Jesus, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds. I wonder how many different stories or aspects of the Christmas story that you can look back and see. But they were very, very beautiful. And hopefully it inspired you, that song, to look forward, to look forward to the time when Jesus would come. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And obviously in the Christmas story, Jesus comes into our world. But Christians know that every year we need to welcome Jesus into our lives again at Christmas time. And it's that wanting him in our lives to make our lives better, to help us be the best person, to become all that God created us to be. We're always talking about that at school. How can we be the best, the best person? And one of the things I know is really important to bring the best out in all of us is to have something to look forward to so that we can be hopeful people. And the Christmas message is one of hope, that love in the world can change everything. And this year has been such a difficult, hard year for so many of us. And it's been a strange year and a different year. And I think right now we need lots of hopes to look forward to. So, I'm going to bring around to all your classrooms one of these. And it says on it, our hopes. It's got a heart in the middle and it's got angel wings. Well, I thought they were angel wings, lifting our hopes, lifting our spirits. I want us to think how we can be messengers of hope, but we have to be hopeful people first before we can give other people hope, can't we? So I'd like you all to make some hearts, I'll show you in a minute how to make one. And it doesn't matter how many hopes you have, I hope you've all got at least one and you can stick them, glue them, pin them. It's up to your teachers how they display this in your classroom. They might give you a creative job with this. You might cut the wings out and the heart in the middle. You might put it on a display board. It's whatever you want. You might put it on your classroom door so we can all read your hopes. I will leave it up to you. Be as creative as you want. But cut yourself a heart out, I'll show you how, and put on it your hope, a hope you have for Christmas time, for tomorrow, for next week. A hope, something you're looking forward to. I think a lot of you might have put, we hope for a vaccine to COVID. And that's happened, hasn't it? But we can still put on it. We can put on it. We hope the vaccine stops people getting ill and it stops more people dying. That would be a hope. You might want to say that you hope that somebody in your family who's poorly gets better. You might want to hope that you get something special for Christmas. You might hope for a happy day. You might hope that there is a new friend for you just around the corner. You might hope that 2021 will be a really good year. You might be hoping that in your family you get a pet. You might be hoping that there will be an answer to fighting and war, that peace will reign in the world. Some of you I know will go for really big hopes, hopes for the world, but think about hopes that you can achieve. Maybe just think about something that will lift your spirits, looking forward to something. Maybe you're hoping for the day when your football team can play again. Maybe if you're hoping for the day when you can go swimming again. I'm missing swimming and I know the swimming pools will open again. But I miss doing that. Maybe you're hoping for the day when you can go on holiday with your family again, or you can see grandma and granddad who live in a part of the country we haven't been able to visit. Maybe you're hoping for the day when you can have your family around for a meal. That's one of my big hopes. That I can have my sisters and my brother and their children, my nephews and nieces around for a big meal. I know that won't happen straight away, but that's a hope for the future. But I'll go in little steps first. Maybe I can just have my nephews around for a meal so think carefully about your hopes but you can have more than one we all need hopes they keep us going when things are difficult and they're the things we want to say thank you for as well aren't they when we hope for good friends 
sometimes we don't realize how good the friends are. There were lots of things happening in my life this week. And I can honestly say my friends in school, they have been amazing. They've really, really helped through some difficult moments. And a big thank you to people who just said, how are you? Are you all right? Anything you need? So in hoping for something, think about what matters and what makes the difference. I'm hoping my friends know how special they are to me and a big thank you to them. So lots of hopes we need. And if you want to know how to make a heart, take a piece of paper. This is my Blue Peter moment. Fold it in half. Get some scissors and start a little way down. See, just a little way down. The teachers will do this with you. Start a little way down. Don't drop it on the floor. So don't pick it up. It's not like Blue Peter this, is it? Things go as they normally do in class. And then go up to the top. Round, round. You can see if I was a proper television pre presenter, know how to do that. So you could all see it. Okay, I've got a heart there. Now, if I don't quite like the shape of that, I can trim it. If it goes up too much at the top. It's always a good spell to make a heart. You never know when it comes in useful. So I've got another heart shape there. So I'm going to be busy putting my hopes. Maybe Mrs. Bashora and I will put one of these on our doors, our door for our office, because Mrs. Bashora has got lots of hopes for her new year as she moves to her new school. And I know lots of you are, are doing hopeful things to give to her, but um, our hopes, maybe we'll have one on our door. Maybe well, Mrs. Bashora, we've got some parts to fill in now. So uh, have fun, boys and girls, and take care. Just before we finish, let's put our hands together, close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, help us this Advent to get ready for the birth of Christ, to get ready in our hearts and in our hopes. Help us to think carefully about all the things that are important, all the things that make a difference in our lives. And we hope that the love, the peace, the joy that Jesus brought into our world will come into our lives too not just at Christmas, but every day. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.